Hello, this is Deborah with Black Education TV. This video is going to be a recap of the video I did concerning Ghana and the apology that they issued to our people of the diaspora. Now, I read through the comments and right away I noticed a very negative vibe and tone coming from a lot of people. It's very clear that our people don't understand history, especially those who say they're in the truth, okay? First of all, the truth is not knowing that you're an Israelite, and that's the mistake that many of you are making. That is not the truth, because um, thousands of years ago, the Mosai said that it's high time for us to wake out of our sleep, and these are people who knew they were Israelites, but they were asleep. So you're not awake just because you know you're an Israelite. If that's the case, we need to tear that page out of the Bible because those people thousands of years ago knew they were Israelites, but they were still declared sleep. Okay. That being said, many of you just went off saying all kinds of things, uh, saying that those Hamites are going into captivity. All oh, you going into slavery. I don't accept your apology and all these other different things you said, uh, calling them heathens and talking about the punishment, talking about reparations. Oh, so you want the Africans of Ghana to give you reparations. It's very clear that our people do not study, okay? We just have this one frame of mind, and that's what you go with. And I'm not talking about all. I'm talking about those who left those comments. You don't study, and this is why you say the things that you say. First of all, you cannot blame anyone for our captivity, because the scripture told us, the Most High himself, he told us what would send us into captivity. He told us what would cause him to turn his back on us. It was prophesied to our forefather Abraham that we would be in the land of our captivity for 400 years because of our own disobedience. So if you want to look over there at the people of Ghana and blame them, no, you need to look in the mirror, okay? The second thing I wanted to say was the people of Ghana are Israelites too. And I'm going to say something else that's going to blow your mind too because this, like I said, our people do not study. They are Israelites too. So you're sitting up calling them Hamites, calling them heathens and saying that they owe you reparations. First of all, reparations is not in the scripture coming from our own people to us. Since when do other Israelites owe you reparations because of your disobedience that sent you into this captivity in the first place? Other Israelites are not going to pay you reparations for your disobedience. As a matter of fact, some of them, some of the tribe of Judah, remnants of the tribe of Judah, may still be in Africa. Another thing I want to say is that many of you American Israelites are so filled with pride. It's beyond off the chain. Because you have determined who you believe to be Israelites. You think that we were the only ones who were Israelites here in America. And then those that you put on your little chart, those in South America. Newsflash, the majority of the tribes still remain in Africa. So every chance you get any story that's covered about Africa, you are calling them Hamites. And they are not Hamites. They are Israelites just like you. And the chief or the, the fellow that was talking in the vi video, nine times out of ten, he is an Israelite just like like you. You can accept it or not. It doesn't matter to me. You see, we study history. We study history a lot. This is why we do the documentaries, and this is why we were able to determine that that 12 tribes chart was bogus. You have people, Negroes in this land, declaring that people who look like Jennifer Lopez are Israelites, but people in South Africa are not. Do you know how foolish and idiotic that makes our people appear when we make such statements. So you think Ricky Ricardo was an Israelite, but this man talking in this video was not. Give me a break. Give me a break. We've got to start making sense out of the things that we say, family. You see. Now, something else that I need to refresh your memory on. In case you didn't know, a lot of the punishments that Judah is experiencing right now are things that Judah did against his own people. In scripture, Judah practiced usury. 
And so right now, Judah is subject to usury. It was Judah's idea to send his own brother, Joseph, into slavery. And so Judah is reaping what he has sown. It was his idea to send Joseph into slavery. And so Judah is in slavery. Judah has always been one that's been kind of hypocritical. He wanted to stone Tamar when he thought that she was a prostitute who had gotten pregnant. But when he found out that he was the one who slept with her that night and it was his seed that she was carrying, he's like, oh, oh, you have been more righteous than me. But yet he was ready to pick up a stone and have her killed when he thought it was someone else. So Judah slept with who he thought was a prostitute when she was someone who was trying to carry on his seed line. Interesting, isn't it? Even now today, the men of Judah are always wanting to stone the women when they are doing the same. Just like in another video I spoke, I said, where there is a whore, there is a whoremonger. But yet there's fingers always pointing at the women. But none pointing at the man. And so as we see, and it wasn't just brothers who were dissing the man. It was, it was sisters too. But that spirit of Judah permeates throughout our lineage period. The men and the women. Hypocrisy. Unfair judgment. If you want to know what Judah was all about, read it all throughout scripture. A lot of the things that we did in the past are coming up on us as punishment. The usury. The slavery. And countless other things. But I wanted to say this. The reason why I brought up the fact that Judah was the one who, who suggested that we sell our brother Joseph into slavery. The reason I brought that up is because nine times out of ten, it was Judah who was sending Judah into captivity. Now, I have no proof of that, and neither do you have proof that it was Africans. That was the narrative taught to you by Gentiles, and that's what you run with. That's what we have all ran with. But nine times out of ten, it was our own selling our own. And it wasn't even as cut and dry as that. Like the brother said, there was fighting. It wasn't even as cut and dry as that. When you have someone with a gun to your head, they probably gave out select numbers, amounts. Okay, you take this group over here. Somebody was probably at the top being paid. Somebody with the bloodline of Judah. We want to sit back and think it was Hamites that did it, but nine times out of ten, it was our own people who did it and allowed it. Because Judah has done it before. Or at least suggested it was all the brothers who participated. But it was at the word of Judah. Now I know some of you may say, well Judah saved his life. He said, well we don't want to kill him, but let's send him into slavery. It was still his idea. And so when I see... All of these demands, demanding that the people of Ghana give us reparations. First of all, some of you, like I said, if you do research, Ghana has already offered us dual citizenship and said that those of us in the diaspora can have land. They've already said that years ago. And so you're saying all these hateful words for nothing, saying you don't want an apology, you want money, you want reparations, you want land. You don't even realize it's like you're forgetting the fact that this captivity was brought on us by us because of what we did. The Most High turned his back on us because of our disobedience. But that part you're forgetting. You're just looking at the suffering. And you forget about Leviticus, the 26th chapter that told us that these things would take place. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter told us these things would take place. And it told us why these things would take place. It wasn't because we were some innocent victim sitting off in the um, land of Israel or the land of Africa and we were just captured because we were innocent and just so pitiful that they came and took us. 
No, we brought the Most High to the point of anger to where he said, okay, now it's time. Come and gather them up. Take them across the water to a land that neither them nor their forefathers have known. This is why this took place, family. And so while you're bashing Ghana for offering an apology, you need to take a look in the mirror. And even with your current situations, most of the things that come up on people in the land of their captivity is a continue, continuance of disobedience. This unforgiving heart that we have towards each other. Most of you don't even know the depth of the anger that we brought upon the Most High. This is why you're saying the things that you're saying. This was prophecy. This was supposed to happen. It wasn't in their power or even the Gentiles' power to undo what the Most High had already spoken. They were just being vessels used. They were just vessels being used to carry out the Most High's judgment. Keep that in mind when you go to mouth, mouthing off, family. They were just vessels. This was prophesied. This had to take place. And what we must do in return is repent. But all the saying, look, I'm not going to forgive them. Those are our brothers and sisters over there in Ghana. Whether you want to accept that or not, you can call them Hamites. That's not going to make them Hamites just because you call them that. I notice our people use that a lot and call them filthy Hamites and all this, that, and the other. Well, in the Most High's eyes, he says your righteousness is filthy rags to him. Why are you calling someone a filthy Hamite? In, your, in the Most High's eyes, you fit the bill for that because of your disobedience and your self-righteousness. He says, your righteousness is as filthy rags. Now, I know some of you make these comments because you just don't know. But that's why I think it's better to say nothing if you don't know the whole picture. Because you've already made the determination that you're not going to forgive them who are our brothers. Those are not heathens over there in Ghana. Those are our people. And many of them have tried to reach out to us. But you holding this bitter hatred in your heart is not helping you. It's not hurting them. You don't only want sitting over here with this anger and bitterness in your gut is going to make you sick. It's not hurting them in any way. That's one of the problems with Judah. Judah has this wickedness that is just so off the chain and you can't even tell them that I mean you won't even accept it you can't even look at the mirror because you're so busy looking at everybody else listen family I say this to you in love because I need us to start thinking we all need to start thinking before we speak on so many different things me included I've never had this disdain against the Hamites as you all call them but I remember at one time I, would, I felt a certain way about um, Gentiles because of what they've done to us. But the Most High has shown me that enemies come in black and white. They come in black and white, not just white. That has been made very clear to me. I can see good in anybody. I've had black people that are good to me. I've had white people that are good to me, Asians that are good to me. And I've had whites and blacks Latinos that have been rotten to me enemies come in black and white so one thing I had to do is learn how to separate like some say all skin folk ain't kin folk I get that now loud and clear I see it plain as day and on the flip side of that I've had some Gentiles that were better to me than my own people. And I know some of you are going to cringe hearing that. You're going to cringe hearing that. But it is what it is. It is what it is family. But on the flip side of that. I am under no illusions whatsoever. Because I have experienced more racism than a lot of you have. I've had some of you say to me that you've never experienced racism before. So you don't know where I'm coming from. So just because I've had some Gentiles be good to me, I'm under no illusions whatsoever. I know who I'm dealing with. But the Most High wanted me to also know that with my own people, you have to know who you're dealing with too. 
Because all skin folk ain't kin folk. You see. And so. Back to the subject at hand. Those of you who went off. And have been going off on this video about the people of Ghana apologizing. I think you better rethink your position. Because Judah's captivity was caused by Judah. Okay. And nine times out of ten it was Judah that sold Judah. Okay. It wasn't Hamites. All right. You see. And so to declare that you don't forgive these people who are making an apology for what was done 400 years ago. These are not the people who did it. They're apologizing for those who allowed it 400 years ago. And I think that was a very noble thing to do. You don't have to accept it, but I do. Some of you have called me foolish for accepting it. I don't care what you say. It was heartfelt to me. It was beautiful. And I accept that apology. And, and frankly, I would rather live and dwell among those people than the people here in America. That's just how I feel, family. Because even here in America, we treat each other like trash. I would rather go over there and live in a village with those people than be treated like trash among my people here. So filled with hate, bitterness, strife, jealousy, envy, murder, deceit. All kinds of wickedness among so-called black people over here. And you got the nerve to talk about those people over there. Like I said, the pride of Judah is off the chain. Filled with drama all up and down Facebook, all up and down YouTube. Mess after mess. Wickedness after wickedness. I saw a video someone, a couple of people shared with me on Facebook where one of the camps. Um, I think it was the camp with the purple outfits, the purple and yellow or whatever. But here they are supposed to be teaching people on the streets and they get into these yelling matches with people and apparently someone in the video said that they called the police on someone that they got into a yelling match with and next thing you know the the one of the people that they were yelling with end up getting shot in the head and so now I would say that your fingers are dripping with blood now, that's just a part of the story that I heard through the, the people that whoever recorded this was yelling back and forth with the people. The, the guys in purple. I wish someone would give the full story. Another brother um, uh, sent me, uh, he got some details and he sent some information as to what happened as well. Where the people you're supposed to be ministering to, you're arguing with them and you end up getting one of them shot. So... Again, Judah is off the chain. Judah is wicked. And those of you who don't know what I'm talking about when I say Judah, I'm talking about those of us who were shipped over here in slavery. We are from the bloodline of the tribe of Judah. All of us. And we are off the chain against one another. And when one of our brothers extends a hand, when our, our people over in Africa extend a hand to say, look, we are sorry. We even have land for you if you want to come home. We will embrace you, give you dual citizenship. You want to spit in their faces and, 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 and just crap on their whole apology. Way to go, Judah. You've shown your hand once again. Okay, family, I'm out.